Hello, today I have an Evatronic 20,000 milliamp hour 60 watt capable power bank. This monolith of a power adapter looks rather plain and doesn't appear to have a ton of outward features from the box. Does this mean it is going to be good or bad? Join me as I explore the performance of this power adapter to find out if it meets the marketing claims. The thermal performance will be explored to find out if this power bank turns into a small space heater or if it stays cool during operation. There has to be more to this power bank than its simple appearance. With amazing things like born in Paris and compact size and a weight in a circle on a box, marketing claims scream quality. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on, and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, the power bank will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. After my last few power bank reviews, I didn't really want to do more of these. They were so bad. It is discouraging when poor performance products are pushed so often and how many of them can be any good. So that is why this video is here, to find out if these are good or not. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon, the super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. This is the Evatronic PD Pioneer 20,000 milliamp hour 60 watt two port power bank with model ET-PB005. Upon opening up this power bank, you can see that it isn't that big. For the capacity, it actually seems almost compact. It isn't. I'd say large pocket maybe or really bag carryable. It is a black monolith with one button, two ports, and the four little indicator LEDs, which only turn on if you push the button and they don't stay on for long, which is welcome. The power bank comes with a 60 watt capable USB C to C cable, only two feet long. We will be testing this in the USB cables round four videos. It seems kind of thin, so hopes are low. The user manual is basic and to the point. You plug it in and it either charges or discharges. They state the modes of operation and the general statistics of the power bank in essentially useless terms. They also fail to state all the modes of operation, which we will find out in a bit. The user manual may be a bit of an afterthought since this is incomplete. The power bank seems solidly built. The power bank bears the UKCA and CE mark for its compliance testing. No US or Canada safety listing. Remember, the UKCA and CE marks are self-declarations, so it doesn't mean any third-party testing was done at all. These generally carry limited value, but better than nothing. I like the power bank simplicity on the outside. Less ports, no display, only one button means less things to break and more durability in general. I honestly don't really care if the power bank is at 43% state of charge and 26 watts are flowing out. The little blue dots indicating state of charge provide plenty of information for me. The power bank weighs 362 grams and the volume is 267 cubic centimeters. In comparison with other tested devices, that is not bad. If you consider the claimed capacity of this power bank, it is one of the highest energy density power banks I have looked at yet. In terms of the comparisons with the other tested power banks, it is differently shaped, but basically halfway between the blade and the anchor's more square end profile. The capacity is supposed to be the same as the Shark Geek Storm 2 Slim and just under the Bassius blade. I pulled this from the Amazon listing and they give a huge list of devices that this thing can charge. The claimed devices include things like the Steam Deck, Switch, and lots of laptops, tablets, and phones. It does this all and yet it only has two ports. I read through many reviews and found that in general people have a positive opinion of this device, unless you're from Germany where even one review says it works but still gave it one star. No idea what's going on there, but it is possible a bad batch of batteries went to Germany. Hopefully that has been resolved. Evatronic is a less Chinese sounding name than some of the other generics out there, but they are a Chinese company. The website, as far as I can tell, does not really exist. I fully expect there to be no customer support at all. No idea what the born in Paris thing is. Is Paris a province of China? Anyway, the power bank is made by Shenzhen Danya Technology Co. Ltd. The power bank has two USB ports for output and one for input. The USB-A port is a Qualcomm QC or quick charge capable port with 12 volts and 1.5 amps of output. This port only operates in this mode if you have only the one port in use. If the USB-C port is also plugged in, this is a 15 watt 5 volt only USB-A port. Still not bad. The USB-C port uses the more modern and much more popular power delivery output. The power delivery specification allows each USB-C port to deliver fixed output voltages or variable output voltages depending on what your device requires. In this case, the power bank provided 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes. Not bad and in line with most modern devices still. The other mode available is the PPS or programmable power supply mode, which isn't mentioned in the user manual. This varies the output voltage 
to maximize charge efficiency. This port offers a PPS mode of 6 volt and 11 volt and can go up to 30 watts. This should be able to do about 3 amps and 11 volts and does have the claim of supporting Samsung fast charging. If using both ports, the device power increases to 45 watts on the USB-C port. The renegotiation of power is mixed on this device. It looks like the USB-C port is somewhat dynamic in that it will keep operating when you plug in the USB-A port, but the USB-A port will drop its voltage when you plug in the USB-C port. So on some plugs and unplugs it renegotiates, but sometimes it stays active. I tested this for its claim of pass-through capabilities and found that it does work as advertised. The power bank will charge at its maximum power of 30 watts and pass up to 15 watts of that power to the USB-A port. If you interrupt this flow of power, the device does shut off the USB-A port. This means that the device is not suitable for an uninterruptible power supply, which isn't in its intended use either. The voltages all stay within tolerances of the USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. This device does not have an always on output voltage. If the load is light enough, the device will turn off the output after a few seconds. There is detection though, so any new plug in will turn the device on. I didn't see any press and hold functionality. Power banks do some kind of marketing nonsense when it comes to the battery capacity. In this case, 20,000 milliamp hours, which is a big number. I didn't look into how many cells are in this thing and it doesn't really matter as long as it works. I am not going to go into a ton of depth here, but if it doesn't make sense, ask. Basically, the unit of energy we care about is watt hours, like your electricity bill. Talking about a capacity in terms of milliamp hours essentially only gives you a piece of the picture, and since the battery voltage is a variable, it tells you nothing. What we need is watt hours. On this power bank, they like to keep this vague, and it is hidden in tiny characters on the back of the power bank. So, we have the battery capacity of 72 rated watt hours. I measured the output capacity at 58 watt hours. With the losses for converting the voltage to the output, you end up with about 81% of the stored energy being sent to the output. This is Quite good, not the best. The charging on this adapter, which tops out at 30 watts, was better though, and so the overall system efficiency ended up at about 74%, which means this is one of the better power banks out there in terms of energy from the wall to the energy delivered to your device. This lost energy is the price you pay for the need for portable power. If everyone used this power bank in between, you'd need about 25% more grid capacity. Charging time ended up being just shy of three hours total. The claim is 2.5 hours. This stays at the 30 watt charging rate for about two hours and 15 minutes though, and then it tapers down for about 40 minutes. So this really charges about as fast as it can. Most of the energy is put into the power bank at the 30 watt rate also, so it is not far off that claim of two and a half hours. If you don't discharge it to absolute zero like I do, then it probably would be done charging in two hours or so. Not the fastest charging device out there, but still much faster than a basic power bank. This power bank is well within the 100 watt hour requirement for extra not permitted air travel power banks. This is an easy carry on device with its smaller size and lighter weight. Not the biggest possible capacity, but functional. I do think it would be nice if the watt hour and usable watt hour capacity was stated somewhere. It looks like they just don't want this on the device. The battery capacity is in small characters on the back label as it is required to be there, but not in any marketing material. I doubt anyone will list the usable capacity because it is a smaller number and a variable, but an average value could be listed or a greater than some number of watt hours. Stating the capacity honestly will let people calculate real use times instead of expecting 72 watt hours and getting 58 usable. The thermals on this power bank during both charging and discharging stayed fairly stable. Around 45 degrees C in the discharging mode at the full 60 watt level. The thermals were much lower during the 30 watt charging cycle. This is good to see nice low and stable temperatures. In terms of the marketing claims, this power bank meets the basic requirements claimed, but there are some issues with these numbers. We know the real capacity of this device and the claimed charging capabilities from some data online. The claims don't count inefficiency in charging cables and the actual charging circuit of the phone itself. So in reality, real world performance does vary and will certainly be lower. You need about a 10 to 15% buffer for modern devices. And in this case, it looks like it's included in the marketing material. So these numbers are accurate. The power bank can run for about one hour with a 60 watt load. This is very good for the size and weight of this power bank. And on to some overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this power bank to its limit to see how many watts it can deliver. The expectation is for the device to safely shut down in the case of a situation like a short circuit or a broken cable. The power bank safely shut down at 70 watts on the USB-C port. The power bank does not recover until you unplug and replug in the cable. 
Okay, overall, this power bank seems quite good. I will continue using it and putting it through its paces to see if it breaks down or has any issues. The simple appearance and lack of extra features means it has one job to do and it does it well. The charging is not the fastest on the block, but it stays at that top speed charging until almost fully charged. The capacity is about what they stated, so accurate enough. The power delivery claims are met at every turn with 60 watts on the USB-C port and 18 watts on the USB-A port. Its usable capacity of 58 watt hours means this is actually a relatively efficient power bank as well, among the top of what I've compared to. It also does this while staying cool. The weight of this power bank is impressive as well. At 360 grams, it is one of the most dense power banks I have looked at yet. I wonder if the casing is durable enough to take some falls. I didn't test that. Lithium ion batteries are scary. Don't drop it. In terms of pricing, this power bank sits at a fairly reasonable 50 US dollars as of 2023. This is a good price point for the capacity and this sets this power bank up as a better value than many of the competitive power banks. This is a lot of positive, but as with any power bank, time will tell. The marketing material is kind of gibberish on this one. The lack of any clear web presence also doesn't give me as much confidence, but I guess if you buy through a major retailer and use their warranty service, it should be fine. Okay, this one is tested and not yet on any database. I need to get on that. It isn't bad though, and the power density and performance looked really okay. The reviews are mostly positive. Oddly, it is like Germany got a bad batch of these since almost exclusively the bad reviews are in German. Hi to all my German viewers. Anyway, otherwise mostly positive on this one. Simple, functional, not overweight power bank. Thanks for watching. Next week, the current plan is unknown. I plan to get a teardown video out at some time in between. I do have this Avatronic 100 watt power adapter, which looks like the same adapter as the Bassius 100 watt desktop, so it should be interesting to check out. There is also a schedule on my website of upcoming videos. I am still working on the rating system for these power banks. Check the description for affiliate links. Thanks again, and goodbye.